Give me just a second. Let me find it in the group. Hold on just a minute. Ooh, I'm so excited to get to do this with y'all. We pin the um, event to the announcements. Um, and I unfortunately cannot share it in the event that I created. It will not let me for some reason. Um, so if somebody would be so kind as to um, uh, share it in the event, the B um gnome live event i would be so grateful for that hello 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 welcome please say hello when you pop on i'd love to know um who i've got here hold on just a second let me mute this hello hi roman hi paula hi tawny hi dawn hi nancy oh it's so good to see y'all um i am really excited to do this B with you guys. Y'all give me just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little um, lemonade in my drink and let a couple more people pop on. I know we had a lot of people that were really excited to be here. So I'm just gonna take a second, calm my nerves a little bit. I'm really nervous and excited. I want this to go really well because um, I know that there were a lot of people that had joined that um, event and missed out on you know, the opportunity for me to be able to do the, the B. And so I'm just really excited to get to do this with you. I have some, some really cool little tips and tricks that I'm going to be sharing with you. Um, as well as a couple other goodies that I think you guys are going to enjoy. Um, and so I'm just, I'm really excited and I'm really nervous. So give me just a second. Let me take a drink. Okay. <laughs> Um, first I want to tell you guys about something that is super close to my heart and means a lot to me and you guys, the, the people who have bought my patterns, bought kits for me, from me, um, joined the Makers Club, um, I, it's, you guys know I love to give back. And because of you being able to give to me, you are allowing me to be able to give back. And um, there is an event coming up locally in my area that is very uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, it is a 5K for a local, um, a local, I think it's a nonprofit. Um, it's called TSHA here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And um, I'm just going to kind of read this because I want to make sure that I tell you guys correctly what it is. And um, I'm just really, I'm, I'm really thankful to you guys because you've given me the opportunity to be able to um, sponsor and be a sponsor in the 5k. I've never been able to do anything like that in my life. And it's just really, really cool to be able to be connected to that. It's really important to me. So TSHA is, um, it's, it stands for total source for hearing loss and access incorporated. And, um, it is for the Tulsa area. Um, they also cover, I think the whole state of Oklahoma actually. Um, I'm not sure a hundred percent, so I may be kind of wrong on that and I apologize if I am. Uh, but it's for TSHA is for the Tulsa area United Way agency. Um, it empowers deaf and hard of hearing people for the Oklahoma area. So there we go. And then they have three different departments that, um, one is deaf services that help deaf and hard of hearing people to lead independent lives. And, um, it offers resources and, um, uh, the second one is community, they have a community resource department, which provides, which I'm sorry, helps parents of deaf and hard of hearing children to be able to uh, know options that they have and, um, provides resources for people who also become deaf or hard of hearing later on in life. And then they, their third thing that they do is they offer uh, professional interpreting services in sign language and Spanish. So, um, anyway, so I am, they're, they're doing a 5K here at the end of April. And I, because of you guys, I'm able to, um, sponsor, be a sponsor in that 5K that's coming up. So I just wanted to say thank you and tell you that, um, it means a lot to me that you guys, 
you know, are doing things for me to support my little business and um, you're giving me the opportunity to be able to give back. So thank you so, so much. Um, if somebody could tag Orly, Orly Severson, I think that's her last name. Um, Orly's trying to find the live and cannot find it. So um, if, if one of my makers could please tag her, I would be so grateful. Okay, so let's talk about the bee. Thank you so much for letting me say that really quick. I just really wanted to share that. Um, and I'm just, I'm super excited about it. So, okay. So we are going to be making a bumblebee guy in here today. Um, in the makers club, we are going to be doing a girl to go along with our boy. And I'm going to be doing pretty much what you see. The only difference is the feet on this guy, we are not going to be doing in this tutorial. I will be doing that with the girl in the um, in the Makers Club. So if you want to know how to do the feet, you'll have to be in the Makers Club. And let me tell you, I, I have closed the doors to new members on that, but I've decided that, because um, I was going to, when we were going to do the event, I was going to offer people that were in the event the opportunity to um, join the Makers Club. But because that did not happen, um, I am going to allow, I'm going to open, I say allow, I'm going to open it and leave it up for, um, I think that I I would like to do about 20 spots. I can't, I don't think I can do more than 20 spots. Um, because what I want to do is once, once I close the doors for the Makers Club um, for new members right now, I am going to be focusing on both my Makers Club and then I'm op I'm starting uh, a new membership that will be uh, business growth, like creative businesses. Um, it's going to be um, mentoring and coaching for that. And I'm really, really excited to be able to offer that. But I can't leave the Makers Club open um, and have new members and new members coming in because I want to focus on them and the business. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to leave it open for just a little while. Um, I'm a, once I hit 20 or 25, I haven't decided 100% sure, um, I will close those doors for a while. So I'm not sure when I'll reopen them again, but it will be sometime later on in the year. Okay. All that being said, <laughs> um, so we're going to be making this bee guy. I'm going to talk to you about different ways that we can do um, the bee wings. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways. I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can do pants for this guy. And then um, I'm going to show you a couple of little tips and tricks to get your lines for your bee stripes um, and how, how I do that. I figure that might be something that you guys might be interested in. And I'm sure I'll come up with a couple other little tips and tricks along the way as well. But I'm really ready to get started and I know you guys are too. So I'm going to set him aside and let's just put him over there so, you, so he can see and y'all can see. Um, the first thing that we're going to need is Kathy says he is so so cute thank you Kathy um, and we will be doing like I said for my makers we will be doing a girl um, and then this week on Thursday we're doing a hippie gnome in in the makers club so that'll be really fun and he's going to be a completely completely new design of a gnome which will have po completely posable um, arms that you can pretty much move all the way around if you want um, and his head will be completely different I think you guys are going to be really excited um, we will be doing him without hair he will have a bald head um, on the top so I'm, I'm really excited to share that with y'all okay so the first thing we're going to need is a four inch section of pool noodle and let me just tell you, I know some of you are like, wait a minute, it's not white like Sarah normally does. It's yellow. Well, I was going to do my normal white one that I usually do because I, I like the white one for the underneath for, it's so versatile for all the different gnomes. Um, but I saw this at Target yesterday and grabbed them because I thought they're great for the bee. I mean, they're yellow, so there's no you're not going to see through anything. Anyway, so I'm just going to use this four inch section of pool noodle that I got from Target. It's the it's the smaller size, which ends up being about I think it's two point four. It is same as my white ones, so two point four inches wide is what I'm using, and um. I'm just going to 
use it as a guide and go about four inches on my material as well. Um, and I'm going to cut that. Hold on just a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to put something inside of my pull noodle for weight. So I'm going to grab one of these hex nuts. And this is a 5 8 by 11. This is not mandatory. I like to do these for weight. Um, but I'm just going to stick that up inside of there. And it will fit all by itself. But I like to add a little extra security. And so I go inside and I just squeeze some hot glue deep inside where I want to push that hex nut to. And then I slip that right in there. And I, the reason I do it deep inside instead of on the edge is if I, if I do it on the edge because of the metal, it will, it will activate or activate. It will set the hot glue really, really quickly. Oh, Sharon said it's her husband's birthday. Happy birthday to your husband. Welcome, welcome, everyone. I see quite a few more people have popped on. I'm so glad that you could make it. Aw, oh, Tracy says, oh, man, he's the cutest. Hey, Sarah, I missed you. I missed you guys, too. I've been so, so my daughter got married last week, and uh, it was just beautiful, but it was crazy. It's my first wedding that I have mothered, <laughs> um, and it was absolutely gorgeous, but it was, there was a lot happening and we totally DIY'd it. So, um, anyway, it just was a lot. So I am just going to cut enough of this and you know, I'm not worrying about being perfectly straight. It's perfect. It's okay. I can clean up whatever I need to, um, at the end of it, but I definitely want to make sure that I give myself enough to go all the way around the pool noodle. And I like a little overhang. So I gave myself a little bit to have extra. And then I'm just going to cut this straight across, straight up. All right, I'm going to put that out of the way. Oop, got a lot of people commenting. Hold on just a second. Oh, this says watching. Okay. Uh, Monica says, hi, Sarah. Forgot to say hi to you and everyone. Hi, Monica. And Parker says, good afternoon, one and all. Hi, Parker. Elvira is wishing... Shannon's, I'm sorry, Sharon's husband, I'm sorry, no, she's not. <laughs> Elvira is saying, Sharon Gibson, I share a birthday with twin uncles. There we go. <laughs> oh, see, I think I know what I'm reading and I don't. Oh, so good to see everybody today. I know this is not in my normal time. I'm just going to straighten this up a little bit. And I drank way too much coffee this morning um, getting ready, so I'm a little bit, I think, on top of being nervous, I'm a little shaky because of the amount of coffee that I had. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line of hot glue right up on the edge right here. Let's get you down close with me. I know you guys like to see close up so you know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to apply a line of hot glue right on that edge, roll my pool noodle right onto it, and then roll it back. And then I just kind of keep it taut you know, so that it's it's not bunching up or anything. And I can clean up my edge here in just a minute. But I'm going to roll it all the way back around. And once that touches, I know, I don't know what I'm telling, I don't know what I'm saying actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a line of hot glue on this material um, and then roll the, uh, the end onto that. So just a little line of hot glue, nothing crazy. Right on there. Okay, and I'm going to snip off my excess, okay, throw that away. This is going to be the back for me. I, um, I want to, I know that my B wings will cover that. So I'm just going to make that go towards the back. Um, one thing to note is sometimes I like overhang and then I'll snip and fold it, but because this is going to be inside of pants, I don't need that. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim off the excess. Personally, that's what I, I think will help me later on. Won't get in the way of the, the pants or anything like that. So I'm just going to, oh, that was the top actually. This is the bottom. The bottom is the where the weight is. Um, Let's see. Hi, Roxanne. Signa, I love your bee. I've made a few, but nothing like this. Hopefully I can find some inspiration and get back in the craft room. Love you, Sarah. Well, thank you. Love you too. I hope this will inspire you. 
Uh, Deb says this is a good time for her because she can actually join in. I think Deb's is in the UK, maybe. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, styrofoam ball. Whoops, you can't see it. Let me get you a little bit, a little bit higher up. So this styrofoam ball is a, is half of a 2.4 inch piece, and I'm just going to glue it to the top. Um, I want to go ahead and roll it just a little bit because it's just a little bit bigger on these um, Target pool noodles, it seems like, just a hair. So I'm just rolling it to make the edges lay down like, like this instead of like that. So I'm going to apply hot glue right here on the styrofoam. And my, star my hot glue gun is, set, is a dual temp and it's set to low temp so that it doesn't melt my styrofoam. And I like that porous styrofoam. See, I got these, at, these come from the Dollar Tree. I don't know if you can see the bubbly. I, I don't, these are like a floral or something, I don't know. Floral foam, that's exactly what they are. Okay. Okie dokie, let me, I'm just reading some comments really quick, making sure I don't miss anything. <laughs> Orly says she's looking forward to no bunnies. Orly's been making lots and lots of bunnies lately. Um, Deb says, yes, I am in the UK and can't stay up till 1.30 in the morning, <laughs> lol. Because usually I go on at like 7.30 p.m. my time, which is hard, you know, for other people that are in different parts of the world. Um, okay, so we have our basic um, body and head on. I'm going to set that aside, and I'm going to grab some dowels and I'm going to grab two of my medium um, hair rollers and these are wonky as all get out but I don't even care it's not going to mess up anything about this little bee in the end so for the legs I'm just going to take the dowel out not the dowel the wire out let me pop this off oh I really popped it didn't I I might need to use my gentler <laughs> ones. So I've got, I'm just taking the wire out of both of these. Whoops, that did not go in my trash can. There we go. That was much nicer. And I'm just going to throw these away. You can save those wires and um, you'll want to, uh, but I've built up so many, so much of a stash that I don't need to save them anymore. Uh, I'm going to measure. I like to have four inches on my legs of the foam. And these dowel rods are six inch dowel rods. So I'm not going to even cut these down for this particular gnome. There's no need to. Um, but I do definitely want four inches on my foam. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that. And then in just a second, I'll check your uh, comments to see if I've missed any questions or anything. I'm just going to cut that off. Throw that away. Let me see. I'm going to grab a drink of water and check my comments really quick. Hi, Deanne. Elvira. Elvira says... We had Easter with family last Sunday. The grown-ups made beehives while the little, little ones colored eggs. How fun. I'm so glad that you guys were able to do that. Um, hello, Evelyn. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this dowel and work it into my foam, my foam hair roller. And I like to wiggle it instead of just jabbing it straight because I have a tendency to um, tear the inside if I don't uh, gently do it wiggly. Um, Kathy said, I tried getting on my Mac and two seconds of it just kept replaying. Glad I checked on the phone. Oh my goodness. I'm glad you did too. Hello, Annette. Or at least says, that is neat. All right, so now I have both of my dowels with their legs on, okay? And then what I want to do is not do anything yet. <laughs> um, I need to take a piece of my material and I'm going to wrap it. 
and I just need four inches so I'm gonna take and I'm going to cut the excess off but let me mark it on here so I know where I'm going I don't think let's see Oop, let me figure out how much I need to roll okay looks like about right there plenty plenty so I'm gonna cut that with some scissors from somewhere there we go so let me turn this really quick Okay, and I've cut it at a horrible angle, so I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And I can clean it up more whenever I, um, whenever I roll it on my dowel, or my tear roller. I'm going to use this as a guide to do the other one. I'm all about using stuff as a guide or a tool. <laughs> So for me, hi Justin, so for me, um, here it is gorgeous outside today, and I am absolutely loving the weather. Um, I really am itching to plant my spring garden, very much so, but I want to make sure that we're through our little cold snaps before, um, before I do that. Let's see. Dan said, I've been waiting for this to start. Denise said, I've been waiting for this to start. It doesn't come up on your page. Uh-oh. And Margaret says, new from Arkansas. What is the yellow piece? This is a pool noodle wrapped with felt. Um, and this, will, the live will be up available for you guys to watch after it's over. So you will have the replay available if you need to go back and see something that you might have missed. So don't worry. And then, um, it's a four inch section. And then, Ro uh, Roseanne, Rosanna Marie is saying, what is under the styrofoam ball? Is it a toilet paper roll? Actually, it's a pool noodle. I love using pool noodles, um, these days. It's just, it's just something that I have just really, I don't know, grown really fond of. Let's see. Thank you guys for your help. <laughs> Y'all are rocking. I appreciate that. Okay, back to crafting. So for me, one of the things I like to do is I like to start my, um, my pieces on opposite, opposite ends of each other and roll them in. By doing this, this allows my material to go into the same direction. If I started them both on the same side like this, then my material would go this way and the pieces would be difficult to, um, to get turned in. And I like to put my lines from my felt facing to the center. Um, that's just a personal, personal choice. Okay, so now I'm gonna apply some hot glue in a line, just like I did on the body, on the pool noodle, and I just am going to roll it here in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to roll it all the way around, back to the other end. Sorry, I'm reading really quick. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember who said hello from Arkansas. That is where I am from originally, born and raised. I grew up in Little Rock. Hold on just a second. I'm going to roll this around. That is actually where I met my husband. My husband is not from Arkansas. He is from Indiana. <laughs> Aww. So, let's see. Paula said, I love using noodles, but I have to get the pipe insulation ones at Home Depot. Well, there are options. Um, so there is a website that you can actually go to to order, order pool noodles. Um, it's www.foamnoodles.com. And it's a great resource for getting foam 
pool noodles when you can't find them because I know it can be difficult when it's off season. Evelyn says, hi, Sarah, or Sarah, my six years old daughter says she likes your pretty glasses. Uh, she says you look so pretty. Oh, tell her I said thank you so much. That's very sweet. Um, speaking of um, six years old, my uh, and daughters, my my daughter is eight, my youngest, and she has been begging me to do a craft with her. And so we are working out um, a time and a craft that we're going to do together in Tenderfoot Village. And um, she is so, so excited, y'all. I told her, though, that she has to talk and not be shy, um, which I think she will. She'll do good. So I'm really excited about that, and I know she is. Okay, now what I want to do, I'm going to take the little cap off of the next set of bendy hair rollers, and I'm just going to hook that right the little, the little wire piece, I'm just going to hook it right on the side. Um, this will just allow me to hide that noodle, uh, I mean not noodle, that uh, hair roller up inside um, and you won't feel that, that hard plastic. Let's see. Mary says, my parents lived in Little Rock from 1976 to 94, then moved back to Michigan. Wow. Michigan, though. Wow. Why, why Michigan? That's cold. That's really cold. That's a big difference. And then, um, let's see. Paula said I couldn't find them either this winter. She's talking about the pool noodles. I use the pi foam pipe insulation from Home Depot. They have a hole in them also. And they do work. I don't want to discourage anybody who needs to get them from Home Depot or Lowe's. The pipe insulation works fabulous. And they have a couple different sizes. So like when I made the little elves this year, this Christmas last, um, they were made with the small uh, pipe insulation, a really small one, so, and they turned out really great. They're just, they remind me of little, little elves. They're a perfect size. Uh, Sigma says, I love the pool noodle. Also, I use a nut for weight too. I've never used the styrofoam at the top yet. I'll have to try it. Yeah, so that is, I like putting the styrofoam on the top for the rounding. It actually, by doing this, it actually um, opens up a lot of options for you um, for the top of your gnome's head, which I really, really enjoy. Okay, so next, I'm getting distracted, I apologize. So the next thing that we wanna do is, I actually, I'm gonna wrap the arms real quick and then I'm gonna show you a really cool trick. So let me see if I have enough on here. Maybe, we'll try it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap, I'm gonna cut this piece off. Hold on just a second. Angie is asking, where do you get the hex nuts for weight? So I get mine by the box at Lowe's. Um, I get this, I get three different ones. Um, depending on the hole, the size of the hole in the pool noodle, I get two different sizes for this. And um, I, the way that I figured it out was I actually just took a section of pool noodle to my local hardware store and saw which one fit up in there snugly. And one of them is 5 eighths by 11. This is the one that will fit in the uh, standard pool noodles, the this size that you can buy at Target and uh, Dollar Tree. So that one will fit in there very easily. And then there's a little bit bigger size, which I buried in my... Hold on just a second. I'm going to pull it out. I just actually got a new box of these. So these are three-fourths by ten, and they are a little bit bigger, and they will fit in the ones that you get from foamnoodles.com. And then these right here are the ones I like to put inside of the baby shower booties, and they are seven-sixteenths. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Seven-sixteenths by fourteen. And they work great for me inside of the um, baby shower booties. All right, so let me go ahead and roll these real quick. And then I'll check more comments to see if I'm missing any questions or anything. And I like to give myself a little bit of overhang uh, just so that I can tuck that uh, wood ball up in there when I'm ready. So I'm going to roll that onto 
that glue. I'm going to do the other side. Hopefully I have enough for both sides. You know what? Let me not do that yet. Let me just take that off. Give me just a second. I'm going to roll this around first. I'm just afraid I'm going to not have enough. Now, for me, sometimes it's frustrating and difficult. Um, so I just like to apply another little bit of glue just, just to grab hold of when I, as I'm working my way around so I don't have to fight so hard with the little piece of material. It really has helped me not struggle with wrapping this all the way. Let's see. Mary said, I put a little gravel from Dollar Tree in the middle of the pool noodle for weight. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. You definitely want to kind of seal it probably so that it doesn't shake around um, if you don't want the noise from it. And Kim says, Kim Coyle says, I get my noodles from Walmart. They are bigger, so you can absolutely do that. When you are making adjustments for what you have available, I recommend um, taking a section of that, that pool noodle with you to your hardware store. What am I doing? To your hardware store um, so that you can get the uh, nut that's going to fit inside of that noodle the best for you. Okay, so I just added a little bit more hot glue to because I like to go um, not just to the edge. I like to kind of go over the edge of where the, the beginning started, if that makes sense. Like a little bit of overhang. And then I'm just going to clip this off. And I'm going to apply a little bit more hot glue because I want this to lay down. And I'm going to set this one aside and see if I have enough for this other one, which I really don't. I probably could get away with it, but I really don't want to chance it. So let me set that aside and grab another piece. Okay. So I'll turn it this way. Oh, look, I'm trying to go a different direction. Okay. I'm just trying to remember which direction, which side I started on for the other one. And then I'm just going to stick it right on here. Not even cut it down yet. Roll it on the edge. You make sure I'm not missing anything. Hope says, FYI, the size of the nuts are the important numbers that after, after the dash for the threads and doesn't affect how it's fit into the pool noodles. Thank you, Hope. I appreciate that. I was not sure. Um, so Sherry's asking what size rollers are you using? That's a great question. Let me grab these really quick and show you. Give me just a moment. I'm just going to grab this other one. I got my three sizes right here. So I get mine from the Dollar Tree. Oop. And they come in three sizes. They also come in three colors. All different all of the different sizes all come in the three different colors so for me if you watch my tutorials um, what I call small is the longest one and skinniest and this one's like seven something inches right at se it's right at seven inches is the small one and then medium is short with the just this it's the same size as the one I call large but it is a little bit wider so this one's really skinny this is the medium and it's five inches no six inches five five and a half inches sorry five and a half inches and then this is my large and it is five and a half inches as well um, and it's the thickest or widest one and I do use all three of them in different tutorials I really like it and you can buy those by the case if you wanted to because you I do show how to use all three sizes Okay, now I'm going to cut a little notch up here because I know I'm not going to need all of that extra material. Actually, I'm going to cut a little further. And I'm just going to roll this around. Let me turn it this way so you can see. Let's get you down here closer to me. I apologize for not having you closer before. So I'm just going to roll it around, and I know I'm going to need help because my glue has dried. So I'm going to apply a little bit of hot glue right here on the edge. And that was going to allow me to roll it without stressing about being able to make it tight. 
it just helps me grab. I really like it. So there's that. Now I'm going to, again, I'm going to apply a little bit more hot glue right on the edge. And then I'm just going to roll it over that overcane. But I do want to make sure I'm going from one end to the other. Um, that'll help me later. Okay. And remember, I like a little bit of overhang. All right, let me cut this off. Okay, I'll set that aside. Read some comments really quick. What size, oh, Sh Sh Sherry asked, oh, I already read that. <laughs> uh, Mary said, we should be able to start using or seeing more pool noodles at Walmart or our local hardware stores. Yep, that's the time to stock up. That's right. I agree. How do you cut your pool noodles so even? I was going to try a bread knife, but also thinking a hacksaw. So I use a knife. This is the knife that I use. It's just a, like a regular serrated kitchen knife, but you can see the key is the kind of serrations that it is. It's not like bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. It's more straight across with that sharp jacket. I don't know what that's called. Serrations. Um, but I have, my husband created a jig for me that allows me to put it in between these two pieces of wood and I can measure the size that I want. And then I just cut right down in this little slot that he created for me. And I total DIY. <sighs> Let's see. Nani said, is there a pattern for the hat and shorts or are you just winging it? We are just winging it. I, this is not going to be difficult. I don't think for anybody, I think you'll be able to be successful with this. Um, I don't think we're going to have to have a pattern. Um, and as far as the bee wings, there is a pattern, an older pattern from the bee that I made last year. If you want bee wings to be like the bee wings that I'm going to do. So you can have that. And that is in the files tab, I believe. Okay. So I have my pieces cut and ready. Let me move those off to the side for a second. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I think I want to go ahead and add my little sleeves and hands. Let me let me clean this this one up a little bit. You can see that I've got like some wonkiness going on. So I'm just going to straighten that out. <laughs> uh, Kathy said, happiness is helping your son clean his car and finding seven packages of Dollar Tree baby booties. Score! Oh my, yes. That would be... It's like heaven. It's like a little bit of heaven. Okay. I'm going to grab these, ooh, these two wood balls that I have. These are three-fourths inch wood balls. You can get them at um, Hobby Lobby, most craft stores. Um, this one is actually a wood bead. Um, and it's just a natural wood bead. And you can also get this at Hobby Lobby and Michael's. And it's just in the natural wood beads. So a little bit different section for that. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put my fingers on the holes of the one that has holes in it. And that way I don't, that way I don't accidentally glue it with the hole in on the plastic. I want them up and down. So I'm going to apply a little bit of glue really quick to that. And then I'm just going to, I want my sleeve piece to be down the, the seam. And I'm just going to stick that right on there. And then I'm going to grab this one, and this one does not matter where you do it. it. Just if you like the way that the rings on the wood are going, you might want to pay attention to that. But otherwise, it really does not make a difference, for me at least. And I'm going to just stick that on there. Then, all right, let me show you this cool thing. So, well, cool thing. I mean, it's... Oh, I just dropped my arm. Hold on. Sorry, you guys. Okay. So, I am being attacked by hot glue strings right now. All right, now I want to make some, some um, bee stripes. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I have this paper cutter, okay? And so I'm going to use this black felt. This is just regular black felt you can buy at Walmart. Um, and I like to do about a quarter of an inch for my bee stripes, but I'm going to show you something. So 
first I'm going to measure on here a quarter, oops, let me get these pieces out of the way, a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to mark it with this chalk pencil. And I'm going to do the same thing on both ends. So I have a measurement to go by. Um, now, I will just cut this because I have a mark on either end, but there's another trick. If you're having a hard time, if you use a paper cutter or you want to use a paper slicer, um, if you're having a hard time getting them straight, um, the line straight, what you can do, this is a piece of cardstock. It's thin cardstock. It's not real heavy, um, but you can actually lay your felt up on your cardstock, and I just line it up with the edge, and I'm using my paper cutter thing to help me make sure it's even. And then I'm going to grab a couple pieces of tape real quick. And I'm just going to stick the tape on part of the felt and part of the cardstock to hold it still so it doesn't slide around. Okay. Now let's say so I marked this side, so I'm good going on this side, but let's say you're, you're having some trouble with getting your, your lines marked or whatever. You can always just turn it over, and then you can mark your, your quarter of an inch right here on the back of your material, if you like, and you can just cut right through this paper, and it's not going to hurt anything. So this will help you in getting your lines straight if you really want lines straight. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. I'm going to, I need three. Uh, so on this B, I put two body lines and um, I've got little cuffs for his hands. So I know that I need three strips of my black felt. So I'm just going to make sure that's even, hold it still and cut it straight down. And I'll do it three times. But I didn't mark, so I need to mark again. So I'm marking that quarter of an inch. Okay. And I am pretty good at eyeballing, so I'm just going to, for that last one, wing it. All right, so I'm, I don't need that anymore right now. Just in case, though, I'm going to keep it close by. Let me grab my pieces. I don't need these um, strips of cardstock. You can totally... Save them if you like for something, but I'm not going to. I'm going to set this aside. Get that out of the way. Now I have my three pieces that are going to be equal in size, which is really nice. So there's those. I'm going to set those aside for just a second for the body. And then um, this is going to be for my cuffs. And this is actually why I wanted it first. So I'm going to take uh, this piece and I'm going to go around the edge of this material. And this is actually wider than I want it to be, but it'll be fine. I think it will be fine. I really don't want to cut it down. Let me make, let me see if this one, okay, this one is the thinnest. This is probably the one that I winged. I'm going to apply a hot, a glob of hot glue right here on the end. And I like to start right on my seam and I'm going a little, let's get you down here with me. Sorry, you guys, let's try to be close up. So I'm going to go a little over the edge. Not quite halfway, but you can totally do halfway. And then I'm just going to go around, okay, back to the beginning, and I'm going to apply another dot of hot glue and overlap. Lay that right in there. I'm going to hold on to it while I cut so that I don't pull up on that glue. So that's that's the first one done. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this one. But I also want to be mindful of where my holes are. So just making sure I'm not covering the hole up. And I'm going to go all the way around again. See, that's going to cover it if I'm not careful. And apply a dot of hot glue right there. Lay it on there. Cut off my overhang just like that. 
and set those aside. All right, let me see if I'm missing any comments. Oh, I'm so glad you guys liked that idea. I thought it was a, a good idea to share with y'all. What measurement of felt to cut on the black? So the felt being cut is three-fourths of an, oh, no, sorry, one-fourth of an inch. Uh, let's see. Um, Mary said, great idea. I hadn't thought about cut, using my paper cutter to cut felt. Girl, I'm telling you, I'm all about trying to come up with, with tools and things to help me along the way. Okay, so now we have that. We have our two stripes for our body. Let's go ahead and put our stripes on. And I don't want to be at the very bottom because I know that my pants are going to come up a little ways. You could actually wait for this step if you want um, until you get your pants on. But I'm just going to go ahead and do it now. So I'm going to start about... A about a quarter of a way from the top of my yellow felt. Anyone need baby <laughs> Dollar Tree baby booties? I just bought nine of them. Ooh, ooh, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this in that glue. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the arms. Just gonna go right around the front. And, sorry, I'm trying to make it where you guys can see. So, um, I said this at the very beginning of the live, but I want to make sure, I know there's quite a few of the, you that have popped on since then, and I want to make sure that you guys are aware. Um, I My membership to the Makers Club is now closed officially, so um, nobody else can go on there and join, um, without real, without knowing right now, but I'm telling you guys because, um, I'm leaving it available for you guys to join. Um, I, I am closing it when I had about 20 more people because I know there were several of you that were, um, asking and messaging and I was telling them earlier, my original plan was that, um, at the event, I was going to offer those that were at the event to be able to um, join the Makers Club, even though I had closed it. So I'm offering that to y'all. Um, if you're interested, just let me know. Send me a private message, and I'll make sure you have the link. Um, but that will only be for about 20, maybe 25 more people. Um, once, I, once I hit that, I'm closing it totally um, so that I can focus on having both the Makers Club and my new membership that will be for the business coaching and mentoring, which is going to be lots of fun. You guys are going to be really excited about that. Um, let's see. Monica says, is there a cost to join the Makers Club? Yes, Monica, there is. The Makers Club is a monthly membership club, and it is $25 a month, and that gives you access. Sorry, I'm fighting with these hot glue strings. That gives you access to all of my um, past live tutorials and classes that I've done, as well as all my patterns. You get discounts on my kits and any of the purchases and supplies. Sorry, pieces and supplies that I have on Etsy or my website, which I, I've started selling supplies. I do the, the noses, the, the wood balls. Um, there's several different things that I've done uh, recently added to the supplies. So anyway, um, but yes, it is a, a monthly membership. You can cancel any time. Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> it's really hard to talk and craft at the same time sometimes. All right, so we have our pieces. We're going to go ahead and work on... I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do um, the shorts. So I'm going to show you a very, 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 very fun, easy way to do the shorts. I think you guys are going to appreciate. I um, taught this particular tutorial, this particular, not tutorial, this particular um, piece, uh, how to do this in the Makers Club. And um, I wanted to give it to you guys, too, for anybody that um, may struggle with pants and things like that. This will help you, I think, feel a little bit more confident in your pants making. So what I'm going to do is I have this black 
uh, dress sock that I get at Dollar Tree. And it's just, I'm going to kind of come up close so you can see, it's just a thin, stretchy um, sock, dress sock. There's no lines in this one. Dollar Tree also has one that does have lines in it. I thought I said it somewhere over here, but I guess not. Um, but I like the ones that don't have the lines in it um, for this particular craft, but it's completely up to you. Um... Okay, Sigma's talking about using a like a kind of a jig for cutting. She's saying, I wonder if a miter box would work. I don't have a crafty guy to make me a jig. Um, so I I think so. I mean, I well let me show you really quick. I'm gonna grab it because it's right here. But it is not a difficult thing to make. This is what my husband made for me to um cut my pieces of pool noodle section. And um, for anybody that's interested, I can kind of give you the measurements or anything like that if you're curious. And you can see on here that he made, uh, they're really light colored, but you can see he made notches. These are one inch notches for me to know all the way up to uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six notches for me. Because um, I typically do three inch, four inch, and six inch um, bodies, just depending on what I do. So that really helps. Um, let's see. Okay. So we have these short, th this sock that we're going to use for our shorts and I'm going to measure out about, I'm going to do, I'm going to start with five inches. Uh, five inches may be a little bit more than I need, but I'd rather have more than enough than not enough and be stuck. Cause this is actually the last dress sock that I have right now. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mark with my little chalk pencil so I can see on both sides. Okay. And I'm just going to cut this across. Okay. So I have my little sock, which, you know what, let me fold it in half. And I'm going to cut just a hair more off. So I want my lines to be even on this. And you can, you can decorate these up. The cuffs on the bottom, you can really like fancy them up with some um, trim or lace or anything like that that you might want to do. Um, so what I'm going to do right now, though, let me get you a little bit closer because I really want you to be able to see this well. I'm going to turn this inside out. So I went, I started with a um, five inch piece and uh, that I cut and now I'm, I've got it inside out and what I like to do is I only want about I think I want about an inch and a half up so I'm going to mark that so I know not to go any higher and then I'm going to fold this in half like this okay and I've got my little spot marked Whoops, where you can see, so you can see, and I'm going to hold that steady and then just cut a straight line up to that mark. Now, what I'm going to do is open these flaps up on the top. No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. First, I need to do something else. So the, the, the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to cut a small V right here at the top. So right at that tip point where I stopped cutting, I'm going to cut a V, a little V, into that space. Okay? Alright, so now I'm going to lift these flaps and you can see that I kind of have, whoop, let me get in the camera, so you can see I kind of have that little V or an almost like an M right there, right? So what I want to do right now is I want to go up underneath that little point and I'm going to apply, this is the little bit hard part to show, but I do have a beginner sitting and beginner standing gnome in the Makers Club that shows this very, very clearly um, so that you can be successful. I love it when you guys are successful and can use these things that I'm teaching you. Okay. So let me open these flaps really quick and then right up here, let's see if I can show it. Let me get you maybe even a little closer. Okay. So I'm going to lift that little 
I'm holding on to that V, that little tr upside down triangle, and I'm just going to go right in a straight line across the top of that. And then I'm going to lay the other material, the top of the material on top of that and just press it together. Okay. And then I'm going to continue to, to seal off the side. So now I have to go at an angle and then straight down. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Hi, hi, Kirsty. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Vicky. Vicky says hi, Sarah. So glad to finally join your on your class. I'm so glad you could be here with us. Okay, so I'm just right where I stopped with that other glue line. I'm going to meet that line and go in a straight line down. Lay that very gently on there and press it together. You really want to make sure that you press it together so that um, you don't have like a glue space that sometimes can be created. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Try not to squeeze out a lot of glue. Excuse me. And I'm just going to go straight down on the very edge. Let me show you that real close up. Oops. There we go. And then I'm just going to lay that right on there. Okay. And I am not worried about any of this right here. Nobody's going to see that. It's going to be inside. So let me smash that together. I'm going to set this aside for a second. I'm not going to flip it right side out right away because I really want that glue to set. Um, so I have less chance of having white, um, the white glue that shows up. Okay. So I have that. Now I am ready to attach my legs. I want to make sure that my line is in the back. I'm going to lay it down. And I can see this is my seam right here. So I'm going to make try to make my, um, my legs right here even across. And there are lots of ways that you can do this. You can use your marker as a guide and um, poke it in. Just poke the dowel. You can cut it with uh, an X-Acto knife. So I'm just going to make a little knot, a little dot where I want this to go. And I like them to be right in the middle. Okay. Oh, shoot. Got my, got my marker on there. I'll have to take some rubbing alcohol to that at the end. Let's see... Hi, Ginger. Ginger said, hi, Sarah. Finally got a live. Yay. Lisa, did you, Lisa says, did you cut the legs on the cut side? Did you cut the legs on the cut side or the finished side? I'm not sure I understand. Lisa, if you could help me understand what you're asking just a little bit better, um, I'll be able to answer you. Uh, did you cut the legs on the cut side or the finished side? Hmm, I'm not really sure. Uh, are you talking about the pants or these legs? Kirsty said, I'm so excited to do one of these. I've been making Grinchy gnomes today. Oh, cool. Getting ready for Christmas already. Thank you, Misty. Misty says cut side, so Misty knows what she's talking about. Um, Kathy asked, is that a Dollar Tree pool noodle? So Kathy, this is actually a pool noodle from Target. That's where I got the yellow. Um, normally I just use the white, the white ones that I get, but, um, I saw the yellow and thought it would be great. And then Paula said, I just started using black glue sticks. Best thing ever for dark materials. Very good idea. Thank you, Paula, for that tip. Nancy said, pants is, pants is it a uh, five inch sock to cut? Yes. So if I cut a five inch section of the sock. And then, yes, it's inside out. That's right. I'm inside out right now. Thank you, guys. You guys are great. Okay. So now I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to poke straight in. Okay? Make sure that it's in there. I don't know why I always want to grab the other one and do it, too. I, it's like I have to do one of each or something. So I'm just poking that in there. They're both poked in now. Okay? And then... I am going to go ahead and glue these in, but I'm not going to do feet just yet because I want to get my pants on before um, before I put the do the feet. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot glue gun. Remember, I'm on my low setting, my dual temp hot glue gun on my low setting, and I'm squeezing a couple of pumps of hot glue inside the hole. Okay. And then I'm going to take my dowel and I like to stick it in there and I twist. And I do this because I feel like, and maybe I'm lying to myself. Actually, I put the wrong one in. Hold on. This one goes in this side. I like to twist because I feel like it really coats the wood on the dowel and really grabs a hold and locks it in around that, um, that pool noodle. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more hot glue since I pulled that all away. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Twist. I just really feel like it helps secure the legs inside of that uh, pool noodle. I'm trying to get a little piece of fuzz that's driving me crazy for some reason. So right now I'm giving it a chance to set standing straight up. Oops, you can't see all of it, can you? I'm going to give it a chance to set straighting up, straight up because I don't want the feet to be one, I don't want them to be off balance, and um, I want them to have that gap between the legs and not go inwards. And that's probably about an inch space between there. So Elvira puts the glue on the wood. That's a great idea too, Elvira. And then you can still twist it up in there, but that way you don't melt, run the risk of melting any of that um, as you're squeezing it in there, if it tends to be on the hotter side. So that's a really great idea. Okay, so there are the legs on. I'm going to go ahead and take my sock and I'm going to flip it right side out. And if there are any white spots that you see, don't worry about that because we can take our heat gun or hair dryer and um, reactivate that hot glue and make that go away. So let me see if I have any, which I really don't, except for a teeny tiny spot right here. So I'm going to try and show you guys what I'm talking about. So if you look really closely right there, you can see a little bit of white. So I'm just going to take my heat gun for a second. And this is not my favorite heat gun. I got it at Hobby Lobby when my heat gun died, but I am going to be ordering one off of Amazon that I like much better, but it is high. It does have a high and low setting. I don't know why. I just only used the one because that's what my old one had. Uh, but anyway, so I'm just going to heat this really quickly. I'm just warming that glue back up. Now you don't want to get too close so that you end up separating your material. You just want to be close enough that where in a moment it will activate it enough to where it just the blue, the white coloring disappears. And you can see it's a little shiny, but it's pretty well gone away. It's actually gone away, but I'm going to wait a second since I just reactivated that. I don't want to pull on it and cause it to separate. So I'm going to set that aside for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and grab, uh, I don't need that right now. Done with that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take my shoes and I'm going to glue. I've already done one where I glued in the, the little weight, but I'll show you. Um, I like to use my needle nose pliers to just kind of help me grab for this. Well, I'm missing a comment, I think. Misty said, I just bought that. I just bought that glue gun. I love the finer tip. I do too. I really like this glue gun. This is this has been the most successful glue gun for me um, since I've been doing this. Kay says, what brand is that glue gun and where did you get it? My glue gun is AdTech and I actually got it at Walmart. I have bought, a, I have a drawer full of glue guns and I've bought all the different ones. I've gotten cheap ones. I've gotten expensive ones. I've gotten ones from Hobby Lobby. And for me, this glue gun has been the most successful, but I know other people that um, have other glue guns that they prefer. So I just took my um, pliers and dropped that right down in there on the, sorry, on the hot glue. And you can see I'm not flush up against the edge. I like to be a little bit away from the edge, just a hair from the back of the, the heel. Um, so there's that. I think it's safe to go ahead and apply our shorts now. So let me real quick... 
slip these on. I'm going to take them in my time. And you can use a little bit bigger sock if you want to um, and to create a wider leg. But I just really, really, really wanted you guys to see how simple it can be to make pants for your, um, your gnomes, your bees. And I actually probably could have gone a little higher and see this is why it would have been great to go up a little bit. I can reactivate that and move that up and I might go ahead and do that um, just to move it up just a little bit because I think I want them up about right there. Yep. Okay. So for me, I'm going to pull his pants down and I'm going to reactivate this, this bottom line. so that I can move this up just a little bit. Maybe that's why you should do the low setting, right? <laughs> Give me just a minute. Let me, I'm almost done getting this off. Okay. Hang that back up. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull his pants back up so I can actually see where I want it to be. I knew that was probably not going to be the best idea, but... Oh well. oh well. Okay. So there's that. Now let me add his little stripe, his little lower stripe. I definitely think he should have two. Okay. I'm trying to see where I want my pants to to sit before I add the stripe. I think that's pretty good. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Yep, add tech. That's right. I'm just reading the comments really quick. Five. Robin says you can get a five pound box of glue sticks on Amazon for $18. Goodness, that's a lot of glue sticks. I bought that glue gun also, says Kathy. Like the tip and the low high tip. Me too. I love having that fine tip. Um, leggings. That's right, Parker. Leggings. Okay. So let me get unhooked over here. I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of hot glue right here to the back and start again. I'm just going to hold that while I'm going around. I'm picking up all the things on my table. <laughs> all right, now I'm back around. I'm going to go ahead and apply another dot of hot glue right here. Pull that tight and lay it right on top. Hold it for just a minute. And there is our bee's body. All better. Oh, uh, Misty said they have this glue gun at Joann's too, so you can use a coupon. That's a great tip as well. Um, could you use foam for the body and top of the pool noodles? So, Kirsty, are you talking about like the craft foam instead of felt? Uh, Misty's saying, Sarah, it seems much louder than the other one. Yes, it is louder than the other one. Uh, it's, that heat gun is not my favorite. I got it at Hobby Lobby, and I personally don't recommend it, but some of you may love it if you've gotten it from there already. Um, yeah, Kathy says it may be a better idea to tape the strips first until you add the pants. Great, great idea. Definitely. It's completely up to you. Um... Uh, it's, it wasn't a big deal, though, for me to just um, heat it up and remove it. So, Okay, so we've got that going. Now that we've got our pants on, we can um, add our 
shoes. Oh, duh, they're right here in front of me. Okay, so I'm going to do black shoes for, for my guy. I'll untape this. And I use the shoe to help me measure how high up I want to go. What am I looking for? My pencil, but I don't know where it went. Oh, duh. I put it back. I thought this was, I have a white one and a yellow one. I thought I was grabbing my yellow one now. I like to hide things from myself. Okay. So I'm just using my shoe as a guide to kind of help me have an idea. This will be more than enough material, um, but it will help me at least make sure that I have enough. And then I'm going to fold it over and use that to mark my second part. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Let me grab my little clippies. I like to use these to help me. This just helps me have a, I mean, I guess I could have just drawn a line. You know what? I'll just do that. That's smarter. So I'll go ahead and draw a line for this one. instead of trying to do all kinds of crazy tricks. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. So you can see, I've got my line drawn. I'm just going to cut right on that line. This is more than enough, I'm sure, like I said, on the going over the top of the shoe. But it's better to have more than enough than not enough. So I've got that. Set that aside. Let me make sure. So Vicky's iPad is dying. She'll watch the rest of the re on replay. Thanks, Vicky, for stopping in. And then Barbara says, "So that's what my desk looks like. It that's what my desk looks like. It does. I am just hiding things from myself. Exactly. Yes, all the time. I fight with myself." Um, okay, so now I'm ready to wrap. And same thing with the arms. I like to start my my shoes. Um, so I like to start them like this and then work out. And this allows me to create, get that wrap around back to pointing inward. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is apply a line of hot glue right down the back. And I'm just going to stick it right. Actually, you know what? I forgot. I need to put some on the bottom. Give me just a second. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm just going to apply glue. Oops, went over the edge. So I'm just applying some hot glue and then I'm going to stick that right on my material. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. This is the easiest way to create a sole for your shoe um, and then wrap the shoe and finish it off. Okay, now I'm going to cut these off real quick and then cut that cut around that. Set that aside. Okay, get that little bit of glue that I went over the edge on. Is there glue residue after you heat up and remove the black felt strip? Mm, not, well, not really, but where I had it down, I mean, there's a teeny, 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 tiny, tiny bit. It's very, very hard to see. There it is right there, but you don't see it. Um, and then when you, if, if I was to reactivate that as well, it'll go away. I'll show you. And then once once you do this, um, it, it you won't see it anymore. So see, it's complete. Oops, hold on, let me find the camera. Whoop, way off. It's completely gone. Okay, love that trick. 
Vicky says, I have a hard time tracing my patterns on black felt. Nothing seems to work very well. Um, I, I like the chalk pencils. Um, they are what I tend to use when I'm tracing on black felt. Danelle said, I filled the bottom with rice for stability before sealing it. Yeah, that's a great idea too. Jeannie said, see you later. Gotta run to the store. Bye, Jeannie. And then uh, Hal's says, will there be a repeat as time difference is hard? Yes, this will be available on replay. I will make sure and have it up for y'all. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just going to go trim, go ahead and trim, around, trim off of the excess around the edge of the shoe. Okay, get rid of that. Do this one. You want to be careful not to angle this one in when you're cutting it so you don't cut into uh, where you can see later that I've actually done that and had to redo shoes for the gap that was in between them that I didn't realize was there. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit more of this cut off. Just a little bit. Okay. So my soles are done. Now I'm going to wrap my shoes. Let's go back to that spot. Um, I just like to lay it on there to help me remember. And then I am going to put that line right up the back, right in the middle. So you see right here. Whoops. There we go. Let me get you down a little closer so you can see. And I'm just going to lay it right on the edge. And then once I get that set on there, I'm going to apply a line right at the bottom and stop halfway. I'm going to take my shoe and I'm going to roll it on my table. I like to be able to see. Usually I do this facing me so I can see, but I want you to see I'm rolling it right around on the edge. Okay. And then I'm going to finish it off and do the same thing with the other shoe. So just going right around the edge. And then when I get to the back to the beginning, I'll overlap it like I like to do. So continuing to roll it around right to there. So Debbie says, I can't find the shoes anywhere. They are all sold out. So that is, I, I, I totally agree. I run into this problem quite often. Uh, luckily, I have a couple of Dollar Trees that, that have them, but the one that's closest to my house never, ever, ever has them. Either people are having lots of babies and needing them or everybody's making gnomes. <laughs> That's what I tell myself. So I have a workaround that I'm teaching in my Makers Club. I'm very excited to introduce um, this new way. Let me get it back up here. So this is what I'm going to be teaching. These are made completely by hand. Um, you guys will absolutely love. You can do multiple different styles, um, but I will be showing you how to do that and not need baby shower booties because I am like you and I have a very hard time sometimes finding them and it gets stressful because I like using the baby shower booties when I can. Um, so you guys will be able to make these yourself, um, those shoes and not have to worry about not being able to find them. And that works great for anybody that's in a different uh, part of the world that doesn't have access to some of the things that we have access to. So this will help with that. And I'm really excited to show you all that. And that will be taught in the Makers Club. But look what I'm doing. I'm not paying attention to myself. I'm going to apply a line of hot glue again. I'm just going to do the same process over. So lining it right up. Look at my hand shaking. My goodness. Right on the edge. That is way too much coffee. I need to make sure and remember that. And then I'm going to... Again, go in a line to the front, roll it, okay. oops, I went down a little bit, hold on just a second, let me move that, there we go. 
All right, and then I'm gonna finish it off just like I did on the other one. If I can keep my hand steady enough, my word. That is crazy. No more bazillions of cups of coffee before alive. Never, never, never again. Okay. Let's see where my. Hold on just a quick second. I've got a little piece. Goodness gracious, excuse me. And I want to fold that over. Okay, I'm going to back up because I really want to seal this. So let me do this really quick. And I'm able to do that because the glue has not set all the way just yet. So I'm going to, again, apply some hot glue. And I had a little gap, so I'm going to move my material down just a little bit further to cover that gap. Okay. And then I'm going to apply a teeny dot of hot glue right up inside here. And I don't worry if you get some of that seeping or white on the bottom. Any of this, you can always remember to um, use your heat gun or your hair dryer and reactivate it. Now let me go ahead and finish this off. And then I'll check your comments really quick, make sure I'm not missing any questions. Okay. Oh, you're talking about someone in Germany. Let's see. And yes, you can get them off of, on Amazon, but they are they are bigger. Some of them are, and they're they're expensive. They're I've seen them for very, very expensive. And I just want you guys to be able to not feel like you have to do that. And you can still make some really cute shoes. What glue gun do you use? Says Hal's. I am using an AdTech. If that was to me, no, that was to Debbie. My bad. Can't get anything like that in New Zealand, says Hal's. Man, I am so sorry. Well, hopefully some of the workarounds that I give will help with that. Um, again, I'm going to be teaching a completely new... Oh, that's another thing. I completely forgot. Um, okay, so I don't know if anybody is aware or not. I haven't really made a big announcement, but I have... My new website is up and running. It is www.tenderfootvillage.net. And you can go there and click on classes and courses. That's where you can go to sign up for the Makers Club um, when it's up and running. Um, but also, you can go there now and you can purchase um, individual classes, uh, live replays that I've done. So if you want to make the Nutcracker, or if you wanted to do the Grinchy Gnome, or if you wanted to do... I don't know, Santa or something like that. You can actually go on the website and buy them individually or you can buy the the whole month of October or the whole month of December or whatever month that, like, I made did sneakers. We did, like, tennis shoes. Uh, I taught how to do tennis shoes out of the baby shower booties, which I'm also going to be teaching how to make them this way. Um, but you can go do that if you don't want to join the Makers Club. You can go over there and purchase those individually um, at any time. So I just thought you guys might might like to know that because I keep forgetting to tell y'all that it's been over there. I've been working on some other stuff and I just completely forgot. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Yes, Lisa, you can definitely use a blow dryer instead of a heat gun. Hair dryer works great. Okay, let's get these shoes rocking and rolling. So I need to activate this really quick because I've got a little white spot right in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm so sorry. I know it's loud. And you don't want to get too close whenever you are doing this because your heat gun will um, will melt your felt or fleece if you're using fleece um, and that is no fun. So you want to make sure you stay a safe distance and sometimes that takes a little bit longer um, but it's worth the wait if you'll just wait a moment um, and let it 
let it work. So I'm going to leave that alone for a second because I don't want to touch that spot all over again. Okay, so now you can see both of my shoes, both of my uh, flaps are turning to the inside, which I like. Um, okay, so the next thing that I want to do, I don't need them this high. Like if I put them on right now, that's basically going to cover up everything. Like you're not going to be able to see the yellow. So I'm going to trim this down just a little bit, putting a little snip in here. And then I'm just going to go around without shaky hands if I can. And I'm just going to trim down some of this material. And this is kind of just a trial and error to see where I want it to be. So I'm going to use my little leg and see if that's enough. And I think it is. So that's going to, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it here. Clean up my edge a little bit. Now I'm going to use this one as my guide for the next one. So I know how far down I want to clip it. Okay, and then I'm just going to go around and clean that up. Y'all, my husband was trying to be so nice, and he's, he's off today, and I didn't even think about that. I thought he was working um, when I set up making my uh, live for today. And so he was trying to be so sweet and said he was going to go ahead and leave so that he, I could have, you know, uninterrupted, uninterrupted live or whatever. And I was so focused on what I was doing and preparing for, you know, getting everything ready. He, as he was getting ready to leave, he asked me, he said, so do you want one more kiss before I leave? And I said, no. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, yes, yes. I want another kiss before you leave. And he goes, good. That was, I was testing you. <laughs> I was like, no, don't test me. Don't do that. Yes, I want a kiss. I can't think straight. I got to focus. Like, I can't think about all the other things when I'm thinking, when I'm trying to get ready for my lives. It's funny. And I think he knows that and he can mess with me. Hold on just a second. I'm just reading my comments really quick. I find... I don't know. I am confused. I say I have a book that has booties and hat patterns for 18 inch, 14 inch, and 8 inch. Oh, yes. Um, there's also some really cool vintage books that you guys can get um, on eBay or Amazon um, for doll making that would work great for anything like this. Um, I cannot think of any of them off the top of my head, but um, and I don't have any right now. But I have been tempted to order some myself so that I can see some of the other ways that you can create uh, shoes and things like that. I would love to share more of those. Okay, so my I want mine both to go in, so I want to make sure they're on the right going the right direction. Now what I want to do is like to fold for the B. I want to fold over one side and and then fold the other side on top. So let me show you that again. So I'm going to take my shoe. Okay, I'm going to hold it like this so you can see. I'm going to fold over this side. So my my fabric material, my material is going this way. So I'm fold, making my fold for my uh, left foot is going to, the fold starts on the right, like this side going into the left. <laughs> So I'm pushing that in, and then I'm going to fold this side over, which I'm going to glue, but I want to show you this first. And I like this because it's going to create a little point, like a little stinger. See it? Right there. So that's what I'm going for in this particular shoe. So what I'm going to do is, now that I've folded it this way, I'm going to apply a little dot of glue right down in here. Make sure that sets. And then gently, I'm not trying to pull tight up, but gently I'm just going to fold that over to create my little stinger. Okay? And I know it's not a stinger on his butt or whatever, but I just think, why not be different, right? <laughs> I think it's cute. Okay, so now I'm going to apply in that fold a little dot of hot glue right in there. And then I'm going to gently lay it over so that I have that little point that I want. And I'm going to use this shoe as my guide for my other shoe. Sorry, I'm getting the glue strings out. Okay, 
oops, I need to hold that for just another minute. It wasn't quite ready yet. Where do you get a heat gun and where do you get the pattern for the hats and shoes? So a heat gun you can get on, um, you can get at Hobby Lobby. That's where I got mine. I don't <laughs> recommend it though. Um, but you can also get it on um, Amazon. And I have a couple of suggestions. I'm actually about to order mine on Amazon um, that I want, the one that I miss. So um, anyway, but you can get them on Amazon and they'll come really, really quickly. Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing that I did with the other shoe while I'm telling you this. So apply a little dot of glue inside, push my fold over, right? So let's get you down here close to me. See this, push my fold over a little bit closer. Um, and then, um, the pattern for the hats and shoes. So I have tons of those over in the makers club or like I was telling everybody a minute ago, which I didn't mention this part of it. So any of my past classes that you go over to um, tenderfootvillage.net and purchase, they, any, if any of the ones that have a pattern with them, you get the pattern for that as well. And they all have their complete supply list. So anything that you're interested in learning over there, um, most of the stuff will have patterns with it. Not everything, but a, a lot of them do. So I'm just making my little point again on this one. So now, whoops, this side. So now I have my little shoes ready. I'm going to loosen this one up just a hair. So I want it to be like the other one. I like to use, that's what I always recommend doing them at the same time so that you can kind of match them up. Now I'm ready to stick my little feet inside. And that's what he's going to look like right there. Oops. So there's that. Let me go ahead and grab my glue. I'm going to, my glue gun, I'm going to squeeze down in the inside of that hex nut. I'm going to squeeze a good glob of hot glue to the very top of the hex nut. As a matter of fact, I want to do that because I want it to ooze over a little bit and really grab the materials around it. So it really holds these shoes on tight. And I'm just going to slip them, slip him down in there. And I actually see something that I need to do, which is I'm going to take my glue gun and poke it down inside of here because the glue that I use to set up, I'm sorry, to um, stick the hex nut in has set and created unevenness in my shoes. So now I can stick this back in. Give me just a second. Let me open these spaces up. And now this should go down a little bit better and be more even. I'm trying to do this without getting stuck. Here we go. Now I'm going to hold this for just a minute and make sure that everything sets before I move on. I also want to make sure that he's not leaning. And then once you get this initially set, you can go in and fill in if you need to and set it a little bit better. Just getting all these little strings that I created on here. Okay. So he is pretty well ready. Let me get this one side up just a hair. Here we go. Perfect. He's great. So there is, there is almost our <laughs> B. Okay, so now I want to do the, I think I really want to do the hat next. Sorry, I'm trying to think what I want to do next. So we're going to do the hat. Let me move my arms out of the way so I don't lose them, my beard. Okay, Let's get all this out of the way. So to do my hat, so... I am going to, I think I want about eight inches, nine inches, eight inches. <laughs> I'm trying to decide on a whim. So eight inches wide. So I want to measure eight inches across. And it does not have to be perfect. You can give yourself a little extra if you need to. I'm going to snip it just a hair so I know where I'm at. 
And then I want to give myself about 11 to 12 inches high. So I'm going to go ahead and just do 12 on this ruler. Let me put a little dot. This is going to be inside out anyway, so it's not going to matter. Put a little dot right there. Okay. And now I'm going to cut a straight line up and I'm going to cut at an angle right here. So let me get the glue strings that are grabbing me away. I'm just going to cut a pretty straight line up. And for this particular size of gnome, I like, like I said, um, 11 to 12 inches. Okay, so now I'm going to cut an angle right here. Let me turn this this way so you can see. I'm going to have to stand up. I apologize. I want you to be able to see my cut, though. And I'm just cutting, like, kind of a curve into there. So I'm going to start right here. And I'll show you this so you can see. And I'm going to get this out. Now you do not have to cut the curve that I cut. You can actually just cut at an, a, an angle, make kind of a, a triangle-ish shape if you like. Um, this is just what I like, that rounded little part right there. So let's see. I'm getting a question. I want to make sure I answer. I apologize. If I've missed a question, please re-ask me. I know I got, I got a little away from me while I was doing some of that stuff. Um, how far, so Sharon is asking, how far up do you go before you start curving it? It, there's no like set. I don't have anything set in my mind or anything like that. I just, um, I just start curving. I don't know how to explain it. Um, the cur the hardest curve is in the first, um, looks like the first four to four and a half inches. So that's kind of where, where I have the most curve, if that makes sense. Okay. So now I have my, um, my piece is ready. So the, I normally, I will do this to where, um, it's on the fold but I didn't do that this time. So I want to make sure that I get my pieces folded up first. So I'm going to fold the bottom edge first, and then I will glue the rest. Okay, Susan says, sorry, I need to leave, but I'll come back and watch the rest later. All right, Susan, thank you for joining us. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I like about a quarter of an inch. I like to add about a quarter of an inch of glue. Sorry, that's not correct. I like to add glue about a quarter of an inch up. That's where how, how big of a fold I want to create. I'm going to have my glue stick ready because I'm almost out. So I'm going to go ahead and apply glue in just a straight line, as straight as possible, which I can't get real straight right now because I'm shaky. And then I'm just going to fold this up. And I end up making, like I said, about a quarter of an inch fold. And I'll show you that. So you can see it's actually an inch, but I, the fold, the width of the fold is about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it over and use the other side as my guide to where I need to fold it up. So I'm gonna apply another strip of glue Excuse me. Oop. All right, let me fold this up. Like I said, I use this as a guide. Smash this in. Okay, and then now I'm going to first do my straight side. So I'm going to fold this open and I'm going to go in a straight line right on the edge. 
and you want to make sure you don't have any gaps in your glue on this particular part because you don't want you don't want any pockets that you'll have to go in and re flip uh, back inside out so I'm just going to lay that gently on there and I'm going to smash it together we have a saying or I <laughs> I say it I don't know if anybody else says it really and truly but um, I say smash it don't stretch it because with this material this is fleece that I'm using for the hat so with this material um, I don't want to stretch it and have these pulls in it so I just say smash it don't stretch it just and it really I really do it to remind myself <laughs> as much as anybody else uh, Gina says do you use the glue sticks with the Gorilla Glue in them. With Gorilla Glue in them. So these are, um, I, some of mine are Gorilla Glue sticks. Some of them are the Adtech sticks. Um, it really just depends on uh, what, what I have at my Walmart. I do like the better quality glue sticks for sure. Um, Gorilla Glue is a great brand. So is the Adtech brand. I do not recommend using Dollar Tree glue sticks. You will have so much frustration if you do. I used to use them very early on in the beginning and they will make your life miserable, not just in your crafts, but in the, in your glue gun, you will have so many problems with it oozing or there's just so much, so much trouble that it causes. So I, that's one thing I don't recommend, even though I, I'm all about saving money and, and doing things very inexpensively when you can, that is one one thing that I would suggest not getting is the Dollar Tree glue sticks. Smashing it together. And I'm only doing a little bit like half at a time. You guys are so helpful to each other. I am so thankful for you. I appreciate y'all so much. It is so great scrolling through and seeing you guys offering your tips and tricks. And if I've missed the question, you being helpful to answer, that means the world to me. Um, so that I can be crafting and showing you guys. I really appreciate it. Okay, I'm starting right where I left off, making sure I have enough glue. And then I'm just going to go all the way down trying to stay in a fairly straight line, making sure I don't miss any spots. If I do, I'm going back and filling those in because I don't want that uh, gap. I have had it happen before and it just makes more work. Smash, smash it, don't stretch it. Why do you, so Barbara says, why do you put a dot of glue at the end of the new glue stick before putting it on the old one so the reason I do that is so that it will hold on because sometimes if I'm not far enough in my glue stick will fall out and by putting a dot of glue it, it glues it together and it just really holds it on tight um, because I tend to be clumsy I'm a clumsy crafter and it just makes my life a little less a little easier Aww. Nicole, Nicola says, I'm loving your clear instructions as it is my first live from the UK. Welcome, Nicole, Nicola. I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Um, I really try. I, my, my heart, my purpose is I really believe to, to, to help people be successful. I got a little bit of glue. I don't know why I'm messing with it. I really, really want you guys to be successful. I want you to be able to take these things that I teach you guys and go make them for your friends and family go make them to sell um i want you guys to be successful and anything that i can do to make that happen i am happy to do it okay so um i cut the little bit of a tip off i just do it i don't know why <laughs> i think it just helps me because i won't feel it inside there so now i'm ready to turn my hat right side out because i talked long enough um, but normally I would suggest waiting a moment before you do so that your glue has a chance to set. Um, and I'm just going to grab this long dowel rod that I have and poke my end through. 
And then I'm just going to flip it right side out. So now I have my little hat and I just gently roll my fingers on the edge where the where I hot glued so that it rounds itself. And my hat is ready. So there and let's zoom out just a little bit. There is my hat. And let me see right here. I want to make sure this is round, not pointy. So there we go. So there is my hat right there. I'm going to set that aside for a minute. Let's work on our wings for a second. So I'm going to show you a couple of um, ideas for wings. So I don't know if I have enough white. Oh, there it is. Good. Okay. So I am going to, oh, by the way, let me just tell you, for those of you who are with me right now, I would like to do something for you. Um, I would like to give uh, two people a bee kit. So I, I would like to do a giveaway of a bee kit. So anybody that is on here, I'm going to scroll through. I'm actually going to have my daughter pick. I think that's actually the best way to do it. I'm going to have her pick a name from all the people. We're just going to kind of scroll and she's going to touch a comment and I'm going to pick two people that will um, get a bee kit and I will PM you and let you know um, because I just want, I want you guys to be able to enjoy making the bee. And um, I really hate what happened with the situation um, with the event for those of you that were signed up and did not get that. Um, and so this is just a way for me to be able to give back to you guys. So thank you. I forgot to say that earlier, but I want to let you know. Thank you for being with, with me, but just stick through to the very end. Um, and I will have uh, two winners. Uh, I've got two bee kits ready to go. Okay, so I really have no like set way that I do my wings just for this particular type of wing. You can use the wing pattern from uh, if you go into the file section in this group and there's just bee wings um, that I did a year ago and I think I'm actually going to just trace these so you can do the same thing with those um, bee wing patterns that are in the bee wing pattern that's in there. Um, so I think that's just the easiest way but I'm going to do I'm going to do four. So instead of doing the two I'm going to do four and we're going to stuff a little bit and make kind of a puffy wing. So give me just a second. Let me trace this out. I just think this is a little bit faster than if I was to go through and draw it out, which is what I did before. I just, um, it's a little trial and error and cutting down and I think this will this will be better than that. And like I said, if you don't want to create your own wings, that's perfectly okay. I have a B wing pattern uh, in the files tab at the top of the, the group that you can find. All right. So I've traced my little wing. I'm going to set those aside and then I'm going to cut this one out and use it as my guide for the other ones, which I probably should have tried to make room for two, but I didn't. And then I'm not worried. I have yellow chalk on here and I'm not worried about it because um, I can remember if I remember correctly, if I remind myself or you guys help me remember, <laughs> um, I will make sure that my yellow is facing in and will be hidden um, at the end. So my trace lines will not be seen. And I know they have these, they have pencils like sewing, sewing pencils that you can, that you can mark on your material and it'll, you can, it's like water soluble, so it'll go away. Um, they also, like I just, just use the chalk. I don't know. I was trying to see if I could fit two on here. I almost wonder, I think I might be able to. We're gonna try. Okay, I'm going to hold on to that. You know what? No, I'm not. I'm going to trace it again because that's the right thing to do. Give me just a second. I see some comments being made out of the corner of my eye, so I'm going to go back and read. You guys, make sure you comment. I don't care if you say blah. <laughs> just comment so that we can see you guys' um, names so that when she picks a winner, um, your, your comment was on there. Okay, let's see how well this turns out using it like this. I really want to try to squeeze the two into this particular 
piece of material. Not really good. It's great. It will be fine. I clean this one little edge up just a little bit. Oh, my shaky, shaky, shaking hands. Lesson learned for sure. Okay, even though these might not be completely, excuse me for wiping my nose, I apologize. <laughs> um, but uh, so even though these might not be completely um, even, that's okay. I am going to um, cut around one. Uh, the one that's smaller when I match these up. So don't worry. Okay, let me grab this one again as a guide. Lay it on here. And I'm going to look at your comments really quick. Make sure. Bzzz, yeah. I love it. I'm a newbie from the UK. Hi, Stephanie. La la la. I love it. Love it. Love it. Just comment. Comment. <laughs> Okay, Robin says, I would love a bee kit. Yes. Um, and for anybody that's interested, if you guys are interested in purchasing a bee kit, if you want to comment and let me know, um, I would like to offer a limited amount of bee kits, kind of like I did with the, um, with the unicorn kit in my Makers Club group. I offered them for a limited amount of time, and then... Um, I think we ended up having about 54 total that sent out in January. So if you would like to have a bee kit, if you'd be interested in purchasing one, um, make a comment or send me a PM. That might be a little bit better, but you can do both. You can make a comment so it's a comment for you guys. But um, also send me a PM so that I kind of have an idea of how many are interested so that I can gauge how many to prep. Um, if that makes sense. It will help me to be able to do that for y'all. Okay. And they'll probably run uh, about $23, 20, 23 plus shipping. Um, and they'll come with all the things that you need to make your bee, as well as some little love extras that I like to add in there. Um, and anybody that has gotten a bee kit, or not a bee kit, anybody that got the unicorn kit from me can can tell you um, that I, I like to put love inside of my kits, so um, I really want them to feel really good when you open them. And I'm not going to tell you everything that goes in them because I like them to be a surprise, um, but it's, it's I, I really enjoy um, putting them together. It makes me feel good, and I feel like it's, it's kind of like a hug, you know, um, when you open it up and you, you get to see the things that are in there, so... Anyway, okay, so we now have four wings ready to go. Now, I have not done, I think I did this last year, kind of, or mentioned it. Um, so there's a couple ways that you can do this. Um, and I'm trying to see if I have my batting. I thought I had some batting down in here. I do. Good. Ooh, I thought I did. Okay. Let's see. I might not need all of this, but so I just have this quilt batting and it comes in different thicknesses. I believe I don't know a lot about batting, um, but I do have this and or you can stuff it with polyfill. So the way that I would recommend doing this is it's one of two ways. So you can either glue these together and leave a gap so that you can stuff with polyfill or pillow stuffing. Um, or you can take your batting and you can cut out a small, a smaller piece, a, a smaller teardrop to put inside there and then glue around. And I think, I'm not sure how I want to do it right now. You know what? I'm not, I'm going to just do it with the pillow stuffing because I think it's the most accessible for people. So that is what we're going to do. Okay. So the way that I'm going to do this, and I don't know the absolute best way as a seamstress or quilter or whatever, but the way that I think I'm going to do this, so I'm trying to line these up together. I got one wing that's just a little bit smaller. Okay, so the way that I'm thinking I'm going to do this is, I'm trying to think what's the best way for it to be hidden whenever I finish it. 
Thank you so much for this tutorial, says Christy. I was registered for your class at the event and I'm happy to be able to still make the B. I'm so glad. Oh, I love seeing all these comments. You guys rock. Would love a B kit because that big that big event never sent mine for the class. Yes, yes. Rose says love your tutorials. I I have so many gnomes. Or notes. Uh, I live in a small town and we don't have a craft store. I have to wait till I can get out of town for the supplies. Yes, you guys rock. I mean, that's not, that's not yes, but um, I'm glad that you are able to um, take notes and be able to do that. Okay, so the way that I think that I'm going to do this, let me just make sure these all measure up really quick. I want to kind of be even. Okay, I think it's going to be fine. So I am just going to do what I originally thought and just say, um, which I need to flip these. That one's going to be inside. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to work through this process because I did not finalize this thought until now. <laughs> um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue around the, the, the bottom, the rounded part, and then I'm going to leave the points open to stuff in the material because I know the points are going to be up underneath the hat and nobody's going to see in there. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. And if you can, if you like to sew, you can absolutely do this and sew the edges around. There's no reason why you can't. I'm just wanting to provide an option for those people that can't sew or don't sew or are afraid to sew. I want you to feel confident that you can still make a cute little bee with some stuffed um, wings. Again, I'm just going right along the edge. And then I'm going to lay that on there and smash it. And this is felt. This is not fleece. And I'm going to leave that open right there. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Make sure I'm not missing anything. I love it. I love it. I love seeing the, the bees. Diane says, I was signed up for the big event. So glad to see this class. It was my favor, my favorite. I am so glad for you to be able to take this. I love it. You guys, please share, invite people to the group to be able to do this. I'm going to leave this B tutorial up for anybody that's interested. I really, really want people to be able to enjoy this. I think it's the perfect season right now. Um, I want to fill Facebook with all the bees. That would be so cool. So fun. Bee gnomes everywhere. And please share your pictures of your bees, um, your bee gnomes, whenever you make them. I love seeing them. And if you really want me to see them, tag me. Um, I'm so um, all over the place, busy doing all kinds of things these days, that if you don't tag me, um, I don't tend to see it unless I just happen to catch it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at the um, comments. Great, great, great. You guys rock. Okay, so really quick, first thing I'm going to do before I stuff this, so I'm letting my, my glue set, is I'm going to go ahead and clean up my edges a little bit, make them a little more even, get rid of any of that yellow chalk that I might see sticking out. And I'm just, that way, no, there's no overhang. So I'm just doing that real quick. This is a great time to check and make sure you don't have any gaps in your gluing if you aren't sure. Again, I'm just trimming off the overhang because sometimes these are not quite even. Um, and then I want to look on both sides just to make sure. Okay, I'm almost done. And I have a little gap. I see it right here and this is actually a if there's glue there but I didn't smash it down good so I'm gonna have to heat it up Ooh, don't pull that off I'm gonna have to heat it up 
and set it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh no. Did I freeze? Oh my goodness. There we go. Holy moly. It looked like I had froze for a second. I was about to panic. Okay, so let me show you really quick. Um, so there's the little gap. I think I hear my husband back. There's the little gap right there. I'm going to go ahead and heat that up for a second so I can set it. You can see how far away I am so that I don't activate my um, belt. Sorry, y'all, my dog is barking. Smash that together, and there you go. Now you can see it's completely set. No worries. As long as you got glue in there, there's no problem. Okay, so I have my, my two parts open. Plenty of room to be able to stick my stuffing in there. Let me go ahead and clean this one up really quick. Just a second. <laughs> Aww. Sandy says, I like your tutorials. They are great. Thank you, Miss Sandy. And if you are out of the U.S., do not be afraid to comment. I am totally, I'm, I would love to send you a kit. So um, if, if you are outside of the U.S., you don't have to say anything about it. Just comment. Keep commenting with everybody else. And if you are chosen as one of the winners, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to, I want to send worldwide. So I want anybody worldwide to be able to participate in the giveaway. So don't feel any hesitation if you are not in the US. Okay, so I have them all trimmed up. I'm just checking my edges to make sure everything's sealed good, it is. All right, so now I'm ready to stuff. Let me grab a little bit of my polyfill. I'm just gonna grab way more than enough. And I want this really, really thin. So I don't want a whole, whole lot. And then I'm just gonna very gently just push it inside that hole And then I am actually going to take my little dowel to kind of push it where I want it and keep it kind of thin. And I don't want a whole lot in there. I just want a little bit to make it kind of puffy. And I'm using my dowel to kind of spread that material, that um, polyfill out a little bit so it's not bunched up in one spot. So there is my little, my little bee wing, kind of puffy. Okay. Do the same thing for the other one. Really just a very little bit of polyfill. Okay. First time watching your live from the UK. Hey, Donna. Janae says, sorry. I'm so sorry for popping in late. Janae, that is perfectly okay. Glad you could make it. Patty said, I've been watching you for some time. Love gnomes very much. I'm new here. Welcome, welcome, Patty. And then Kay says, as a beginner, it would be fantastic if I could win a kit. Amen to that, right? All the things you need. Marina, kits, what? I missed this part. I missed that part. Just got back from PT. They abused me again. Oh, girl. So um, I'm going to give away two of my bee kits. So I have two bee kits ready to go. And I'm going to give away two at the end of this live, this tutorial. Um, I'm, my, I, I say at the end. Um, my daughter, when she comes home at three-ish, um, she will pick a winner off of the comments that were made during the live. So you have until my daughter gets home from school and picks a winner and we will do that maybe live on, I think that would be kind of fun actually to have her scroll through and announce a name. That would be super cool. Let's do it like that. So keep an eye out for the announcement of the winner with her later on this afternoon. Sharon says, thank you so much, Sarah. Postage to Canada is more expensive so a lot of times in other groups, excuse me, a lot of times in other groups are U.S. only. That's thanks for thinking of us and everyone included. My pleasure, girl. Um, I just, I just 
want to make sure that you guys are able to get something like that. Okay, so they're both stuffed and ready. Both my little bee, bee wings are good to go. Now I'm going to seal them up the rest of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the, the hot glue just on those edges, lay them flat on there, smash them good. Same thing on this one. Okay, so I got that going on. There's that. Now, let me grab my arms. We are real close to ready, y'all. My beard, pom-pom. Woo, there's too good. I was about to panic. I only had one pom-pom in there. I'm trying to get these last bits of things ready to go. Okay, I'm not gonna tuck those bee wings in just yet. I want to wait until I get him a little more finished. So I have this piece of faux fur. This is a, whoopsie. This is three and a half inches by three inches. Okay. Um, I, I, that is the typical size of beard that I like, but I actually may end up making it a little bit smaller on this particular gnome because I really want to see the um, stripes. So. Let me see real quick. Yeah, I'm going to need it significantly smaller. So one of the things that I'm going to change about my piece of material is I am actually going to cut at an angle. So at the bottom of my material, I'm going to cut a V. So I'm going to do, I don't want this one. I don't know how good my blade is on that one right now. Okay, so I'm just going to take my material, nothing perfect, and cut a little V or I'm cutting the, the edges, the corners off. So there's one corner gone. And then I'm going to cut this other corner. I'm, and it's kind of a straight V. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Like it's not an actual pointy V at the bottom. Kind of looks like underwear or something or so that's how I'm doing that one. Let me brush this out really quick for any of that extra. I might even need to go a little higher. Let me see. I think I might. Yep, yeah, I'm going to go a little higher. So give me just a second and I am going to cut more of an angle. So one thing to keep in mind when you're cutting faux fur is you only want to cut through the backing of the material. You don't want to press hard enough to where you cut through um, to the beard material or you'll end up with like a really sharp edge and it won't look as natural. And it does, you can do that if that's the look that you're going for because I have seen some do it very successfully um, with that straight edge. But for me, my preference is not a straight edge. Okay, let me get this off. Get the excess off of there. Okay, let's check him out. Yeah, I'm gonna like that. Okay, put that away. And then I have like way too much excess. So I think I'm gonna actually trim it down just a hair more. So we started with three and a half by three. So I'm gonna actually cut down another quarter of an inch or half an inch. I don't know. I'll measure it and I'll tell you in just a second what I end up with. Make sure it's even. Brush that out. Close that up so I don't spot myself. And I'm just brushing off that excess faux fur. I seem to be able to get things where I live, but feel bad they don't get simple things where they live. Thank you. Elvira says, Pat Limber, you're going to love it. Best decision I've made joining the Makers Club. Thank you, Elvira. Yeah, we have a lot of fun in there and we learn a lot of stuff. And 
Um, I try to just give all of my tips and tricks and techniques and I tell everywhere I get something, I keep nothing hidden or anything like that. I want you guys to be successful. And the more successful that you are, um, the happier I am. <laughs> I love seeing you guys successful. Like, it's really, really rewarding in, in my heart. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It feels really good to know that I'm teaching good <laughs> so that you guys can be successful. Does that make sense? I don't know. Okay, so now I'm just checking him out. I'm sorry. I'm going to check this beard again. Oh, I need to measure this. I know I told you guys I was going to do that. Okay, so top to bottom now we're at three inches long instead of three and a half. So three inches in length. And again, we're still at three inches uh, in width. But remember, we cut those uh, eight, those that V out. Okay, so now I'm ready to glue my beard on. Let me go ahead. Whoops, don't on it. I hate it when I do that. I'm going to go ahead and show you really quick. So I'm going to take this. I'm pinching in the middle. You can see I'm pinching. And I'm actually going to apply a little dot of hot glue right in the pinch. Give me just a second. Let me let this set for a second. Oh, okay. Says the love of teaching is why you are so good. Thank you. I love it. Love it. Love it. It's very rewarding to my soul. <laughs> I don't know. Marina says you are very patient, organized, concerned about everyone else, not yourself. I'm. You guys are important. And, you know, we all need encouragement. Hmm. That reminds me of my, my poor daughter. You guys, keep her in your thoughts and prayers because she, my teenager, she's really having a hard time with some loneliness lately. Since my oldest daughter moved out, um, you know, she just got married last week and um, she's just a little bit lonely. Okay, so now I'm going to apply some hot glue right here. And I'm going to stick it right here on the front of him. So I'm going to turn it around so you can see kind of how I did it. And you can pull it up a little higher or however you want to do it for you to be able to show your B stripes. I like to just make sure that they can be seen. That's kind of important to me. Okay, now we're ready to put our arms on. So I'm going to take and get all this faux fur off of here. I'm going to get you a little bit closer in. Oh, Jamie. Oh, you guys. Jamie says, you have definitely kept me from depression during COVID with all of your classes. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> y'all are going to make me cry. <laughs> oh, man. You guys have helped me too. Don't think that it's one-sided because, you know, having, having a group, having classes, having, you know, being able to show up regularly, it, it keeps me motivated and focused. It gives me purpose. Um, I feel, I feel loved, you know, and it's right now it's hard sometimes. Um, you know, you get real lonely with this COVID years that we've had. So here's what I just did. I applied some hot glue to the um, top of my styrofoam ball and I'm laying my foam hair rollers. I have to hold them. I'm laying them on top of that hot glue. I want to make sure that my arms are pretty even. I like my arms to hit just below the waist, just a little bit. That's just personal preference. Everybody has their own different style and way. You do not have to do it the way I'm doing it. Um, and then while I am letting this set, I like to take my guy and I like to bend his arms in half. And you know what? I'm going to have to wait another minute because this is really, I haven't used my glue gun in a second. So it's really warm, really hot glue. <laughs> Elvira says, Jamie Jackson, me too. I made gnomes for gifts or sold them at work and gave 
the money to charity. Oh, I love you guys. Um, so my, one of my goals, like you guys, like I said, I want you to be successful. Um, and one way of doing that is by giving you guys the opportunity or the ability, I feel like, I hope, the encouragement and all the tips and tricks so that you guys can be successful so you can sell and make an income if you want to. Um, so you can um, sh make it, have a craft with your friends or your family so you can be with the others that you love. Even if you can't be in person, you can craft with your loved ones, you know, and just share that with them. Um, you know, I, I, it's, it, it really means a lot to me to be able to, to do that and see you guys really enjoying it. Colleen says, I've only made one gnome so far. That is perfectly okay, Colleen. We all start somewhere. We all have to start at the beginning with that first gnome, and that's where the addiction and the love for the gnomes comes in, for sure. I'm trying. I don't think I left quite enough, so I'm going to have to... Give me just a second, you guys. This is being a little, little stubborn. It'll only take another minute. I just really have to make sure this sets. And then once it does, I can always apply a little bit more glue on these sides right here to really secure it. I just really want to make sure that the top... Oh, I did not get enough glue in there. I lost a foot. Let me fix that here in just a second. It's being a little bit rough. I'm so sorry, sir. Okay, so now I'm going to bend my arms. And I like to just grab them and bend them. Oop. I forgot I don't have the foot in. All right, give me just a second. Let me fix his leg really quick. It means I got to go in here and use the tip of my gun inside of that hex nut and really work it around as I really want it to be able to go down in there. I still also need to apply more hot glue too so that it secures it. And I got an arm that is feeling a little loose still. So bear with me. Just don't fall off, sir. I'm untucking these a little bit. Okay, get in there. Good. Much better. Definitely feel like it's in there better this time. Okay, let me get take this take care of this arm. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold him so that I can see underneath in the back. And this is one of the benefits of bending the arms is I don't have to worry. I can still kind of manipulate it. Like I can move it if I need to or whatever once that's done. But I cannot wait to share the new method that I'll be teaching that will alleviate this issue right here. This is, this is not going to be an issue um, anymore for things need to get stuck together. So here's what I'm going to do because I'm still having a little bit of a tough time. I'm going to take a strip of felt. I'm going to cut it and I want enough to go right over the top here. And this is going to create more security. Um, nobody's going to see that, but it's going to build stability in, in those arms and really hold them on. So I don't have to stress and worry about it. So I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue right up underneath here, and I'll show you this. Try not to drop him. So I'm adding hot glue right there, and I'm just going to lay that felt to build more security right there on top. So I don't have to worry about those arms anymore. Usually I have enough uh, felt left over at the top that I like to overlap them, but in this case I did not have enough material left this time. So that is what I'm doing to fix that. Okay, so there he is so far. He's really coming together. Let me make sure I'm not missing any important comments. I'm sorry if I have. Please comment again and let me know if there's something you want me to see specifically. Oh, Paul says loneliness can be overwhelming. Spend extra mom-daughter time together. It always helps. Absolutely. Yeah, we... We stayed up pretty late last night just talking and, you know, I was trying to be an encouragement to her um, just to let her know that, you know, I'm here. I'm not, I am not going anywhere. So um, I think she, she was very appreciative of that. I, I know she was. 
Um, it just sucks, you know? This not having our friends, I don't know why I'm clipping this off because nobody's going to see it, but I did. But not being able to have easy access to our friends and school and social life and stuff like that. And she's got prom coming up, and I think she was a little bit upset about that. Um, it's just the things, man. I'm so sorry, y'all. So Cigna is saying, I push my arm through the pool noodle and then link the wires together in the center of the noodle. So yeah, yeah, that sounds something like what we might be learning soon. No, I'm not going to give any, any for sure clarification on that, but you, that actually is, um, sounds, sounds familiar. I'm trying not to give away too much, um, but I, I love that idea. That is a very good idea. Very, very, very. Okay. So now we're ready to do our hat. So I'm going to take my hat and I like to put it on here just to kind of see where it's going to fall. And let me see. I like to see the, how I want to do the placement. So I like this. And then this also helps me be able to determine where I want the nose piece to be. <clears throat> And I am almost out of my clay noses that I've made. So I'm going to have to make some more very soon. And if you want to know how to make clay noses, in this group, in the free group, there is a um, tutorial. It's in the guides, I believe. Um, and it, sa it shows you it's like all about noses or noses or something like that. And you may be able to even just look up noses in the search and find it. Okay. So this is the nose I think I'm going to use. I'm perfectly okay with that one. Um, let me think for just a minute. I'm trying to decide 100% sure if I want to use this guy. Maybe a little bit smaller. Let's see. Oh, that's cute. I think I'm going to go with the smaller one this time. Okay, so now... I'm trying to decide where I want it, and I think I want it right there. So I'm going to spread out the faux fur so that I can see the grid underneath there. And then I'm going to apply some hot glue right to the back. And that's a good amount of hot glue. And what I like to do is I like to even with wood noses and fabric noses, I like to lay it on there and roll it up into that material. Let me make sure I get him on even. So oop, I like to roll it up so that the hot glue that oozes goes up, not down into the material or to, to the faux fur where you see it in the bottom. This will like alleviate people's being able to see any hot glue underneath here. By rolling it up and then you can just pull the faux fur at the top all around it and that is but I also see I'm going to add this is a little bit thicker faux fur so I'm going to add just a little bit more just being mindful and then again I'm going to pick it up and lay it onto that and roll it up and then any excess ooze I'm going to glue that I mean I'm going to stick the faux fur on Excuse me. Let me get a drink real quick. I've been talking for a long time. <clears throat> okay. So we have that on there. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. What brand of hot glue gun do you use? Mary asks. I need a bigger one. I have the mini heat, the mini glue gun. This is an ad tech. And I got it at Walmart. Um, and you can get it at Joann's. Which I just was informed by Misty. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Elvira says, bless you. Thank you so much. Okay. <clears throat> so there is that so far. Now let's check our hat again. See how it's looking. So one of the things that we can do right now, which um, I'm going to wait just another moment, I think. Um, I'm going to go ahead and build up my um, parts and then... I'm going to put a little bit of uh, polyfill underneath. 
the hat to kind of build up his head just a little bit. So let me look at this. Hold on just a second. I want to get this going like this. I'm trying to decide so that I know when I'm putting, where I'm putting the, um, the little antenna and stuff like that. I want to make sure that I have it how I want it to look. Hi, honey. Hi. So now I'm trying to see kind of how I want to do. This is this part I like to take my time with so that because once I get these cut, that's it. Uh, there's no moving them around. Jamie Erickson says, there you go again with the free advertising. You can get all these people to sponsor you and give you free items, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, man. I have no clue. Just doing my thing. Okay. So let me get you guys down here a little closer to me. Right here. Okay. I really like how he's looking right now. So I think this is where I'm going to go ahead and do the um, pom-poms the antenna and the bows. Okay. So first I'm going to kind of decide, let me turn him your way. I'm going to kind of decide how I want these to be. And I like mine to be spaced apart a little bit more. Um, it's kind of gives it that younger whimsical look when you do that. Um, so I think I'm going to go right about here and here. And I'm going to hold that <laughs> and use my marker to make a little dot so I can see right there, tiny little dot right there and right there. Okay. And then I'm going to put my lid on. Okay. So now I'm going to cut a little tiny, tiny slit right here. Let me grab my better scissors Henri puppy dog I have a Boston Terrier so you'll hear him snort and make silly noises he's funny so I'm making teeny 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 tiny slit very very tiny slit right there in there and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side teeny teeny tiny slit yep keep your comments coming Keep them coming, whatever. It doesn't matter what you say. If you don't want to say anything specific and you just want to put your comments on. So we see them when Lena's going to do her little annou um, announcing of the winner. Okay, so now I'm going to poke this through. And I'm not worried because, you know, I did just mark it, right? I'm not worried because my little bo my little bows are going to cover up any of that. So don't don't stress or worry about that at all. Now... I think actually something that I'm going to do that I don't normally do at this point is I'm going to apply a little bit of hot glue right here at the top so that I can go ahead and hold my hat in place. I'm going to lay that right there on top. And I have to hold it for just a second because I don't want it to, while it's trying to set, I don't want it to slide forward. So I'm holding on to it for just a minute. Uh, Donna said, oh, Sarah, I love Boston. We have four together at one time, and my husband's family bred them for years. They are the best breed ever. We love the him. He is so sweet. So I, I don't know about the whole breed, but definitely, I mean, I would think, yeah, that, that makes sense. They're such a sweet, sweet dog. Very loving and very smart. Um, we have him trained to he can ring the bell to go outside when he needs to potty. Um, and he will let you know when he needs uh, food or water and he will snort at you. It's hilarious. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm trying to decide where I want to put my, like how I want to position my antenna, and then I have to keep in mind what's happening underneath here. So I'm going to flatten that antenna. I'll show you. Let me open this up. So my antenna has gone through, right? So what I'm doing is I'm actually bending the antenna so it lays onto the, the material right here, okay? And I'm gonna glue that in place right underneath that antenna are the 
pipe cleaner. I'm just going to glue that and hold it on there for just a second. You can use your little finger glove, see whatever those things are called, finger protectors if you need to. Just make sure that that's bent and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to take this one and you don't have to have the same length as me if you don't like the long antenna. You can cut it down to whatever size, but I wouldn't do it until you get your initial parts going and then you can decide how much you want to cut it down. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So let me move all my little faux fur out of the way so you can see. So here is the other side and I'm going to use my finger and just bend it over about a finger's length. And then I'm going to apply hot glue right underneath that. Kind of hard to show but i'm right underneath that um, pipe cleaner i'm going to press it against that material without gluing myself to it if i can and then let that set for a minute okay so there he is so far Oh, uh, Heather says we have a mini English and makes noises too. So you, anybody with a, with a dog with a snorty dog knows, I think, your dog talks to you, right? <laughs> Lincoln talks to us all the time. And he expects you to understand what he's saying too. I'm not joking. Like, he's like, are you listening to me? I've enjoyed you so much over the last few months, says Ruby. Even though I didn't comment, I don't comment a lot. I love your tutorials and making gnomes. You are amazing. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Sharon just bought clay pot to make beehives. Can't wait to make a beehive and a gnome. All right. I can't wait to see it. You have to share. Okay. So it's set enough now that I can now bend. So here's what I like to do. I like wonky antenna. And so I kind of bend like little zigzags in them a little bit. You can even bend them more than that if you want. Make them however you want to do. So I'm going to go this way and that way. This. So this, this part right here takes a little bit of playing. And then move it that way and this way. You just kind of have to play with it until you get it to a point that you like it. This way, <laughs> that way. And then once you get it to where you like it, so I'm going to clip off my excess. Let me turn this so you can see. <laughs> it looks crazy right now. But I'm going to snip off some excess because I don't need quite that much. And grab my pliers. You can probably use scissors to do this as well. I am going to clip off this much first. I always start with less and can add more clipping as needed. Oh. Um, and then I'm going to take my bows. So I have these little bows. <laughs> Heather says she has such an attitude at times. She acts like she's sleeping when she wants to ignore me, but looks right at me while snoring. <laughs> That's funny. Aw. Amy says, my lab retriever girl is laying on my leg sleeping. Aww. Love it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply these little bows. These you can find very easily at Walmart. If you, if your Walmart has a sewing area, you can find them very easily at Walmart. Um, they are in where like the little flowers with the sewing stuff, the little flowers and, um, you know, like they have like little stuff on the back of them sometimes. Um, but anyway, so these are great. These are about one inch in size. So I'm just going to stick that right there on that one. Stay still, sir. 
And then I'm going to do this one. I'm going to put a little dot of hot glue right here on the back. Excuse me. Okay. So there is our bows. Okay. I'm going to pull his pants down just a little bit so we see a little bit more of that yellow right there, maybe. Okay. Yes, I'm really liking him. Super cute. Oh my goodness. He's so cute. He's a great little bee. Now don't forget, in the Makers Club, we're going to be doing a girl bee. And she'll have a skirt and everything like that. Um... And she'll go along with our boy bee and our beehive that we made um, last week. Okay, so now I'm going to take this pom-pom. And this is about, I can't remember if this is three quarters. Of, I think this is a one inch pom-pom. So I'm going to take that. I'm just looking for the side that when they made it is a little bit more flat. And I'm going to take, let me get you up here with me. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put that little pipe cleaner right into that glue and this is so easy y'all this this is one of my favorite parts of making this is how easy this just goes around that pipe cleaner and hides any glue any evidence of being glued on it is so cool one of my favorites for sure okay now I'm going to take this other one and I'm going to find that flat part apply my hot glue right in the middle just a bead and I'm going to stick that one on here, push that around, Whoop. let him fall. He had too much honey. He got, he got drunk on the honey and he fell down. Okay. So if these are too much for you, you can always bend them in a little bit more. You can just do all kinds of little things with it. I really, really like this a lot. Okay, now let's add some finishing touches. So one thing that we want to add really quick is um, the bees. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't think for a second. Bees and a flower. So bees, I get these little bees on Amazon. They have bees and ladybugs. You get tons of them. Oh, so Gina says bows are cheaper in the baby section because they come in long cards and long cards for babies. That is a great suggestion. Thank you, Gina. I completely didn't even think about that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm just going to put, actually, I'm going to, I see a little bit of hot glue. So I'm going to activate this a little bit right here at the bottom. Oh, that's real. This won't take but just a second. Almost. Trying to activate any strings, clean it up a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to take these bees, and I like odd numbers, so these bees come with a little sticker on the back. So I take the stick, this the paper off, but I still apply a dot of hot glue right onto that. And the reason I take the paper off is because if you leave the paper on and you glue it on, they're going to fall off anyway, and the paper is going to be stuck on your gnome. So I went ahead and take, I go ahead and take the paper off. So I'm just going to stick these bees just wherever. Paper off. Oh, Linda says she loves him. I love him too. He's so cute. Ha, uh, Jean says too much, honey. Yeah, uh, that's a cute, I don't know. I don't know if I've read that book, but that's, I'll have to check that out. <laughs> I mean, bees do get drunk on honey, or they, I guess, I say that. Maybe they get tired or slow because they need flowers or something. I don't know. But I would imagine bees getting drunk on honey. Okay, so there is another one. I'm going to probably do five. And where am I going to put this one? I don't know. Maybe on the hand. Oh, that's the one with the... We don't want to do that. How about right here on the hat? Maybe I'll do three. Okay, now I'm going to do the flower. So lots of choices for flowers. You could do a yellow flower, but he's got so much yellow going on. I think I wanted to do like a, like a white one maybe. So I have some of these 
different white flowers that I got from Dollar Tree. Hold on just a second. Let me grab this other one. It's a little too far away. So these all came from Dollar Tree except for this one right here. Oops, you can't see it. Hold on just a second. So this came from Walmart, this droopy flower, and I don't know if this would be the best choice, but I thought we could hold it up and try. It looks like the stem might be a little too wide for our hole, so we're going to go ahead and pass on that one. But we have some other great options, and these both came from Dollar Tree. And I really like this one, but I do kind of like this one. So um, let me snip off one of these and see. Let me go ahead and tear that off. And I'm going to clip this and then just kind of see which one I like. Whoop. And I'm a lefty, so I tend to like my stuff on the left side, but it looks like I put my hand on the right side instead this time. So I'm just going to stick that in here in his hand. And I think that's really cute. Yay! He's so cute. Let me pull him up real close for you guys to see. Here is Mr. B. He is beautiful. He's he's handsome. I like him. Um, so here is Mr. B. Um, keep commenting while you can. And like I said, as soon as my daughter gets home at three, sometime three-ish, I will um, grab her and we will go outside and do a live and choose uh, a winner. Um, thank you so much for joining me for this live. If you are catching the replay, thank you for watching the replay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I hope this gave you something that you can add to your uh, creative toolbox. Um, and that's really it. Uh, I can't wait to announce a winner. If you want to join the Makers Club, please PM me or um, um, comment and let me know. Uh, comment might be because there's been a lot, lot, lot of comments. Oh, the bee, the wings, the wings. Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Laurie. So let's do the wings real quick. Ooh, that was almost... That was almost not a great thing. Okay, so for the wings, what I like to do is overlap them. And you kind of want to spread them out. I like them to show in the front a little bit. So his little flower, let's get his flower out of the way so you can see. Okay, so I like to overlap them. Just a little bit. And I try to kind of feel it out before I glue. So you can see them both, right? I'm gonna move this one up just a hair. Now I'm gonna hold them together so I know where I want them to be. And I'm gonna apply some hot glue to the top, like probably top third of one of those and glue them together. I don't glue them all the way together, all the way down. I like them to kind of be free flowing-ish, if that makes sense. Um, get this little bits of hot glue and strings everywhere. I'm going to have to take a lint roller to him afterwards. He's covered, covered, covered in strings. <laughs> okay, so now I like to go right up here to the back pull the hat down before I always ch check and try before I glue. Thank you so much, Laurie. I almost forgot that very important part. So there is the wings. Now I like to glue them in. So the way that I do that is just continue to make sure I like the way everything looks. And you decide how low or high you want your, your wings to sit on your bee. I'm going to go with about right there. So now I'm going to lift up that hat. And then while I'm holding this in place, I'm going to lift up the back and just apply a decent amount of hot glue to the back right in the middle. Lay that on there. Right there. And then pull this down. Now another thing, if you want to add a little bit of height, which I almost forgot this as well. 
I've got a little overhang of glue that is causing me trouble. Let me clip this just a little bit. Where's my scissors? Okay. Give me just a minute. I'm just trying to straighten him out. Okay. Oh, nope, that was a trick. Why not stay? All right, let me apply. A, I've got to apply a little bit of glue right here and towards the front just a hair because he's wanting to lean back because of those wings a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of glue to the front to help him lean forward just a little. I'm going to let it set up. Too much honey. Yes, too much honey. That's right. Okay. Another thing you can do if you want is apply a plaque or a wooden stand or um, some, you can create a scene around him if you like to create some more stability if you're concerned with him falling over. Now, if you don't stuff the wings with polyfill, this has not been an issue at all for tipping over or anything like that. But um, having that uh, extra weight on the back side did create some of that. Another thing you can do is apply, uh, like add another little... Um, weight to the front of the shoe so where that gap is I'll show you what I'm talking about so if you are going to be doing this and you don't want to even have to deal with the um, stress of it tipping over these will also fit wait these will fit inside of here I have one that does maybe you just have to get a little bit smaller just a hair I'm gonna grab the wrong one Hmm. Well, you can get a little bit smaller weight that will fit right up inside here. And I recommend taking this to your hobby store, I'm not hobby store, your um, home improvement store and figuring out which one will fit inside of this area. I've done this before plenty of times um, in the past and just getting one that'll fit right up inside of there. And that'll create a little bit more additional weight without being too heavy to allow it to be balanced. Okay, so now, like I was saying, for the, you can always add a little bit. I don't like a whole lot personally, but it's completely up to you what kind of um, you, gnome you want to create. But you can add just a little bit of polyfill to the front right up here to create a little bit more lift on that hat if you'd like. And just build it up a little bit. So there now is our little bee guy and I love him I think he's great uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed my live with y'all um, tell your friends I don't know I don't know what to say um, thank you so much for being here with me this afternoon I know it's a, a different time than I normally do but uh, I'm really glad that you guys could come and participate um, I hope that you felt like this was um, something that you could enjoy doing. I, 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 I do apologize for anybody that didn't get to take my class in the live in the big event. Um, you know, the ones of you that were already connected with that, you guys know what a mess that ended up being. I'm not going to get into all the details on that, but um, I, this is just some, a way for me to give back to you guys. Um, I really appreciate you. Thank you for being here with me. Mary is asking, what about the yellow and black stripe wings? So that's a great question. So you can use these. Um, I actually show how to do this in the old bee that I made a year ago. If you'd like to know how I use these wings in um, in a bee, you can watch that. And that can be that video can be found on YouTube under Tenderfoot Village on my YouTube channel as well as a bunch of other videos that I've got on there. So um, check it out if you'd like to know how to use the striped pinwheels in, um, in adding them to your B. Thank you so much, you guys. Love and appreciate you very, very much. You mean the world to me. Thank you for the opportunity that y'all have given me. 
um, to be able to sponsor um, the race, the 5K for TSHA. Um, you guys rock. And I just, I cannot thank you enough. So um, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Enjoy the weather. I hope it's good for you. If not, I hope you get some really soon. Um, I will see you very soon. And um, anybody that's interested in the Makers Club, reach out to me and let me know. I'm just going to take a few more uh, and that's it. So thank you so much. I will see you guys soon. Y'all have a wonderful day. Bye.